let me begin with my talk. Uh, algebras with slowly growing length. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference for giving me a chance to present this topic to you on today. Uh, this talk is based on a joint research with Professor Alexander Guterman. And most of the material I will be talking today is covered by two papers which are currently now in preprint, namely algebras of slowly growing length and steady growth of length function and mass of algebras by Professor Guterman and me. Uh, I will quickly go over the basics of the length theory to remind everyone what we're talking about. If A is a finite dimensional, not necessarily unital, not necessarily associative F algebra, and S is a finite generating set of A, then we say that a word of length M in S is a product of M elements of S with a certain placement of brackets, which matters since the algebra is not necessarily associative. If A is unital, we consider the unit to be a word of length zero in every generating set. We continue with defining the length of the generating set as follows. Firstly, we introduce the set S to the power of M, which is a set of all words in S of length M or shorter. Then we, we define L sub L capital sub M of S to be the linear span of S to the power of M. And we define L capital of S to be union of all L capital sub M of S from M equal to zero to infinity. That is every word in S. Since uh, S is a generating set, there exists such an index K that uh, L sub K of uh, S equals to whole algebra A and we call minimal such k length of s denoted as L of s. Finally, we define the length of algebra A as maximum among all possible lengths of its generating sets and denoted as L of A. A couple words about the history of uh, this invariant. The problem of the associative algebra length computation was first discussed in 1959 and 1960 works of Spencer and Rivlin for the algebra of three by three matrices in the context of mechanics of isotropic continua. Uh, it was uh, then carried on to more mathematical approach by Pass, who proved in 1984 paper that the length of matrix algebra of size n by n over a field F is bound by n squared plus two divided by three, uh, take an upper integer part. And then uh, Papachena in 1997 proved uh, the following result for an associative algebra with a given maximal degree of uh, minimal polynomial of its elements. He bound the length of algebra using a specific function of dimension of an algebra and this maximal degree, uh, the function you can see on your screen right now. Uh, for matrix algebra, this uh, function allows to obtain bound of uh, magnitude n to the power uh, one and a half, which is better than n squared, but uh, still not a strict bound. Uh, however, 
I am currently not going to be covering associative case or matrices. I will be moving to the non-associative case, and I would like to introduce two key notions. Uh, the first one is uh, inherited from the associative case. It is the notion of irreducible word. We say that a word W of length K in S is irreducible uh, if for all H uh, less than, strictly less than K, W does not belong to uh, L capital sub H of S. That is, uh, W cannot be represented as a linear combination of words of lesser lengths. It is easy to see that an irreducible word of length to a greater is a product of irreducible words of positive length, because otherwise it could be reduced to a linear combination of words of lesser length. And uh, the second notion, which is new to an associative case, is that of characteristic sequence of a generating set S. Uh, we define this, this sequence is a monotonically non-decreasing sequence of non-negative integers, uh, here denoted by m sub 1 to m sub n, constructed inductively by the following rules. Uh, if uh, algebra is unital, that is, dimension of L capital sub 0 of S is equal to 1, we said to be its first elements to be zero. Otherwise, we move on to the next step. Uh, then denoting parameter S sub one to be the difference between dimensions of L capital sub one and L capital sub zero. Uh, we define next uh, S sub one elements to be ones. And uh, in a similar fashion, if uh, we have for some r, r greater than zero and k greater than one already considered uh, elements m sub one to m sub r r and the sets l sub zero of s to l sub k minus one of s we denote by sk the difference between dimensions of l sub k and l sub k minus one and define the next s sub k elements to be equal to k. Uh, this sequences allow to achieve greater understanding of uh, structure of non-associative algebras. They are clearly connected to irreducible words, uh, namely we can find a specific basis of algebra uh, using uh, similar to, in a sense, to characteristic sequence by its properties. We can, uh, for a generating set S of an algebra A, there exists a finite series of sets E sub one to E sub length of S, satisfying the following properties. Uh, firstly, this set is an, uh, expanding chain of sets, E sub H is included in E sub H plus one. Uh, e sub H is a basis of L capital sub H of S. And uh, each set consists only of irreducible words in S of lengths from zero to H with uh, exactly S sub J, uh, that is the difference between dimensions of L capital sub J and L capital sub J minus one, words of length J for J from one to H and uh, either one or zero words of length zero, depending whether uh, algebra is unital or not. Uh, this means that uh, each basis set uh, E sub H uh, has the same number of elements equal to well, uh, to uh, H for, uh, as uh, the characteristic sequence, namely the difference between corresponding dimensions of uh, linear spans of 
s to the power of h and s to the power h minus one. Uh, this result can be proved uh, using the inductive constructions of uh, the sequence with each new set being a expansion of the previous one supplemented with maximal possible number of irreducible words of new lengths. This result allows us to demonstrate several useful properties in non-associative case. Firstly, for any term m sub h of the characteristic sequence of s, there exists an irreducible word uh, in s of length m sub h since uh, if uh, there exists an element of uh, the characteristic sequence of certain value, uh, then respective S sub J is non-zero, uh, which means that it is included in the final basis E sub length of S. Uh, correspondingly, if there is an irreducible word in letters from S of length K, then it is included into the characteristic sequence of S, since uh, existence of such word means that uh, uh, dimensions of uh, L sub K and L sub K minus one minus one differ by at least one. Uh, the characteristic sequence of S contains exactly dimension of A terms and the last term is equal to uh, length of s, which allows us to uh, see how this notion of characteristic sequences is connected to the initial invariant of length. And uh, the final two properties are that for every index h such that m sub h is greater than two, there exists uh, two values t1 and t2 such that uh, elements of characteristic sequence uh, m t1 and m t2 are less than m h but uh, m t1 plus m t2 are equal to m h uh, it is uh, evident from this property that each new element mh can be bound by 2 to the power h minus 1, which can be demonstrated using induction. And combining this with the, third, uh, the fifth property on the screen with the third property of this on the screen, we arrive to the upper bound for a general uh, non-associative algebra. Uh, that is, uh, for a not necessarily associative algebra A of dimension n, its length is bound by 2 to the power of n minus 1. This bound is strict. Uh, to demonstrate that it is indeed strict, we can consider the following example. Take an algebra A over a field F with basis E1 to EN and the following multiplication table. Uh, e sub i squared is equal to e sub i plus 1 for i from 1 to n minus 1. And uh, all other products are considered to be 0. We have length of a to be, by definition, greater than or equal to length of its generation set e1, uh, which is, as can be seen, is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 while by the general bound above, length is bound by two to the power n minus one. Thus, uh, we have equation length of A is equal to two to the power n minus one. Uh, finally, we arrive to the topic of my today's talk, uh, that is of, uh, about algebras of slow growing length. We say that a class of algebras has slowly growing length if for any representative A of this class, it holds that its length is bound by its dimension. Uh, for example, associative algebras have slowly growing length and uh, 
it can be quite easily checked using the following fact. Uh, for associative algebra A and its generating set S, if the sequence of uh, sets uh, L capital sub H of S stabilizes at one point, that is, we have L sub H of S equal to L sub H plus one of S, then for all greater values uh, of index of K greater than H, we have L sub K of S to be equal to L sub K plus one of S. Uh, there is a short proof uh, below, but I will not focus uh, that much on it since uh, it is associative case and uh, everyone who uh, has been following me so far, I'm sure could be able to demonstrate this without much difficulty. However, uh, I will be showing that today that not only associative algebras have slowly grown in length and that uh, it is possible to introduce other classes of uh, algebras which do also have slowly growing length. And uh, to begin with, I would like to introduce two polynomial, uh, two classes of algebras which uh, have certain polynomial properties. Uh, firstly, I would need to introduce the notation of uh, monomial set for monomial sets for variables x, y, z. Uh, we have the set Q capital sub L of x, y, z to be the set of all multilinear monomials of degree three or less in variables x, y, z. Uh, but uh, except for uh, not all monomials of degree three are uh, taken into account, but only those uh, which have a structure of uh, a single element multiplied by the product of two elements and which do not have a uh, variable z as the first element in this uh, outer multiplication. And correspondingly, we have set q sub r uh, of x, y, z, uh, which is quite the same, except the structure of the multilinear monomials of degree three is uh, a product of two elements multiplied by a separate elements and not vice versa. Uh, with uh, z still having uh, with uh, z still having to be inside of the product of two elements and not as the last separate element in the multiplication. We define a sliding algebra as follows. We say that an F algebra, we say that sliding algebra is an F algebra which satisfies at least one of the following statements. Uh, if it's uh, non unital, we want that uh, the product of Z by XY belongs to the linear span of Q sub R of x, y, z for all x, y, z and a, or the product of x, y multiplied by z belongs to the linear span of q sub l of x, y, z. And for unital case, we expand all uh, linear spans by allowing one to be also uh, uh, part of this linear span. The second class I will be talking today is that of mixing algebras. We introduce additional notation of the set P of X, Y, Z, which is a union of Q sub L and Q sub R, 
that is uh, it includes all uh, multilinear monomials in variables x, y, z uh, of degree three or less, except for those monomials of degree three, which have z as the separate uh, element in the product, not inside the product of degree two. And uh, we define a mixing algebra as follows. And F algebra A such that uh, for all X, Y, Z and A, it holds that uh, X, Y multiplied by Z and Z multiplied by X, Y uh, belongs to the linear span of B of X, Y, Z and one if uh, A is unital or only P of uh, X, Y, Z, if A is non-unital, is called a mixing algebra. These uh, two notions allow, to, allow us to prove quite powerful auxiliary result. Uh, namely, if A is a mixing or a sliding algebra, S is a generated set of A and M is a characteristic sequence of S, then the difference between two neighboring elements of characteristic sequence cannot be greater than one for all J from one to T minus one. Uh, I will go briefly over the main proof uh, step of uh, this proposition covering only mixing non-unital case. Uh, assume that uh, two neighboring elements of the characteristic sequence m sub j plus one and m sub j differ by at least two, uh, then all irreducible words in S of length m sub j plus one are products of words of length two or greater since uh, as you can recall from the properties of characteristic sequence, uh, if there would be a word of, uh, an irreducible word of length m sub j plus one, which is a product of a word of length one and length m sub j plus one minus one, then m sub j plus one minus one would be in the characteristic sequence as a length of irreducible word. However, as the characteristic sequence is non-decreasing and M, mj is strictly less than m sub j plus one minus one, uh, this is impossible. Now, if we define S of w as a minimum of lengths of its factors, and uh, consider a word w sub zero of uh, length mj plus one with uh, s of w zero minimal across such words. And assume that uh, we have for w zero uh, and its factors w zero prime and w zero prime prime, uh, W0 prime to be the shorter of two factors. Uh, by the initial remark, we have S of W sub zero to be two or greater, which means that there exists uh, two reducible words of uh, positive length, W1 prime and W2 prime. Uh, which are factors of W zero prime. Since A is mixing, uh, we can write W zero, which is equal to the product of uh, W prime zero and W prime prime zero, which is in turn equal to the product of W one prime, W two prime uh, and uh, W zero prime prime. Uh, 
and this uh, product of three elements belongs to the set uh, to the linear span of set p of w1 prime w2 prime and w0 prime prime however the set uh, the set the set p does not contain any irreducible words of length m sub j plus 1 indeed uh, as uh, we can see before uh, the set p uh, contains either shorter words uh, monomials of uh, degree two or less in variables x y z which are currently uh, elements w1 prime and so on which uh, have do not have length m j plus one or it does uh, or for uh, the monomials which have uh, degree three while they do have uh, length m sub j plus one as elements of uh, as words in s uh, they cannot be irreducible as the value of the function s of them that is the length of their shortest factor is strictly less than that uh, for uh, the word w0 as uh, we have either w1 prime or w2 prime to be this uh, uh shorter factors and this means by our choice of w sub zero that uh, all words corresponding to monomials of degree three are reducible words of length mj plus one this means that the word w zero itself cannot be irreducible uh which allows us to conclude that the initial assumption that these two uh, elements of characteristic sequence uh, differ by more than one is incorrect. Uh, from this, it, fo it follows quite easily that for a mixing or a sliding algebra, uh, length is bound by dimension. Indeed, if we consider a generating set S of A such that its length equals to length of uh, algebra and its characteristic sequence m1 to m sub dimension of a by the previous proposition we have length of a equal to the last element of characteristic sequence which is less than or equal to uh, previous element of characteristic sequence plus one and so on all the way to m sub one plus dimension of a minus one uh, which is bound by dimension of a since m sub one is either zero or one by definition of the characteristic sequence uh, however while these two classes of mixing and sliding algebra are quite abstract it turns out that uh, many of the well-known uh, classes of non-associative algebras can be uh, classified as being mixing or sliding. Let us begin with uh, Le Leibniz and Lie algebras. Uh, a is called Leibniz algebra if for all x, y, z and a it holds that x, y multiplied by z equals x multiplied by y, z plus xz multiplied by y and a is called Lie algebra if for all x y z and a uh, holds uh, the anti-commutative property x y equals to uh, minus y x and uh, uh, the second identity the identity x y multiplied by z plus y z multiplied by x plus z x multiplied by y equals to zero which uh, using anti-commutativity can be rewritten as uh, the property defining Leibniz algebras and it's well-known fact that uh, Lie algebras 
are also Leibniz algebras. Uh, it can be seen using these uh, polynomial definitions that both Leibniz and Lie algebras are mixing and sliding, which means that they have slowly growing length. For Lie algebras, this bound can be slightly improved uh, as uh, Lie algebras of dimension greater than one are not one generated. Uh, its length would be bound by dimension of a minus one. Uh, indeed, there cannot be one generated as we have a square of any element a of Lie algebras to be equal to zero from the anti-commutative property. And uh, uh, Lie algebras using the same property are not unital. This means that for a generated set of S of A with uh, length of S equal to length of A and characteristic sequence M sub one to M sub D, we have M one equal to M two equal to one. And uh, using the same chain, the similar chain to one above for general mixing or sliding case, we achieve bounds of uh, d minus one for length of the set S and length of algebra A correspondingly. These two achieved bounds are strict, uh, which can be seen using the following examples. For uh, firstly, consider algebra B sub D with basis x1 to xd with d3 or greater, and the following multiplication table x sub i multiplied by x1 is uh, equal to x uh, y plus 1, uh, i from 1 to d minus 1 with other products being 0. It can be checked that b sub d is a Leibniz algebra, and for its length uh, that holds the general bound uh, equal to its dimension d, and uh, it is bound from below by length of its generation set of x1, which is also which also equals to d, and this allows us to conclude that the equation length of bd uh, equals to d holds. For the case of the algebras, uh, one can construct construct quite a similar algebra uh, a d with a basis x1 to xd d3 uh, or greater, and the following multiplication table x1 multiplied by x y x i is uh, equal to x i plus one, uh, which is equal to minus x i x one uh, i from two to d minus one with other products being zero. Uh, similarly, we can it can be checked that a d is a Lie algebra and its length is bound from above by d minus one by general bounds and it's bound from below by length of its generator sets, a uh, generator set x1, x2, which is also d minus one, which means that the length of algebra is equal to d minus one. Such uh, Lie algebras are also called uh, filiform Lie algebras and provides uh, extreme examples, not only for length, but for several other uh, important algebraic invariants. Another two widely known classes of algebras, which can be classified as uh, mixing and or sliding, are uh, Novikov and Zinbil algebras. A is called Novikov algebra is for, if for all x, y, z in A, it holds that x multiplied by yz minus xy multiplied by z equals to y multiplied by xz minus yx multiplied by z, and uh, xy multiplied by z equals xz multiplied by y. And A is called uh, Zinbil algebra. If for all xyz and A, uh, 
uh, it holds that x multiplied by yz equals to xy plus yx multiplied by z. Uh, we can show that Novikov algebras are mixing and Zinville algebras are sliding, which means that both classes have slowly growing length. Furthermore, it can be shown that uh, not all Novikov algebras are sliding and respectively not all Zinville algebras are mixing, which demonstrates that these uh, two classes, mixing and sliding algebras, are indeed uh, independent from each other. Uh, there are also examples of uh, Novikov and Zinbill algebras, which achieve maximal uh, length bound. However, I will not be uh, focusing on them too much due to the remaining time and will proceed with further results. Uh, firstly, I would like to talk about algebras with non-slowly growing length in general. Since the strict bound for general non-associative algebras is exponential, the length is bound by two to the power of dimension minus one. The class of non-associative algebras as a whole does not have slowly growing length, uh, but even more specific examples of algebras, even those defined by polynomial properties, do not necessarily have slowly growing length. One example of it is the class of Winberg algebras. Uh, a is called Winberg algebra, is for all x, y, z, in A it holds that x, y multiplied by z minus x multiplied by y, z equals to xz multiplied by y minus x multiplied by zy. And uh, if we consider an algebra R with by basis E1 to E4 and the multiplication table E1 squared equals to E2, E1 multiplied by E2 equals to E3 and E3 multiplied by E2 equals to E4, with other products being zero, it can be checked that R is a Winberg algebra, but the characteristic sequence of E1 is one, two, three, five. Uh, indeed, as we can see using the multiplication table above, the word E2 uh, would be an irreducible word of length two. The word E3 would be an irreducible word of length three. And the word E4 as a product of words of length three and two would be irreducible words of length five. Uh, this uh, characteristic sequence allows us to conclude that length of R is greater than length of its generated set of E1, which is five, uh, but five is strictly greater than four, which is dimension of R which means that the Winberg algebras are not necessarily, do not necessarily have slowly growing length. Uh, a expansion of the concept of slowly growing length is uh, the class of algebras with steadily growing length, uh, where we change the bound on length from uh, dimension to a linear function of dimension. We say that uh, class of algebras has steadily growing length. If for every representative A of this class, it holds that length of A is bound by some constant C multiplied by dimension of A plus a constant B, where C and B are dependent only on the class and we call C an upper length velocity or U velocity of this class. Uh, by definition, classes of algebra with slowly growing length have steadily grown length with U velocity one. Uh, the natural step in considering this algebra with steadily growing length is uh, 
introducing classes similar to, similar to sliding and mixing algebras. And to do that, I would also require uh, a new set of uh, monomials. Let uh, sigma capital B an ordered sequence of variables z0 to zk. Uh, S be the unordered set of the same variables, T be a subset of S, and S sub zero be the set of these variables without Z zero. Uh, we define w, uh, w capital of T as the set of all multilinear words in T of uh, uh, the length equal to power of T. Uh, we set W of uh, empty set to be one uh, if we consider unital case and empty sets uh, otherwise. Uh, then we define D capital of T as the set of all multilinear words in T with all possible lengths. Then we define D capital prime of T as the set of all multilinear words in T which have length strictly less than power of T and uh, the set d0 of sigma as the set of all multilinear words in S, except those words of length k plus one, which have z0 as a factor of the last multiplication, similar, similarly as we have defined p, the set p of x, y, z, as the set of words of length, uh, multilinear words of length three or less, uh, which do not have Z as a factor of the last multiplication uh, for words of length three. And uh, also we need two additional uh, sets as before, uh, D sub L of sigma and D sub R of sigma, which are similar to D zero uh, which uh, uh, we require to have only the first or only the second factor to be free of uh, Z0 instead of forbidden uh, Z0 to be a factor. Using this notation, we can define uh, K mixing and K sliding algebras. We say that an F algebra A uh, such that uh, the set of all words uh, X multiplied by W of uh, the set Y1 to YK united with uh, W capital of the set of the same set multiplied by X that is uh, the set of words which have uh, x as a factor of uh, the last multiplication uh, is included in the linear span of uh, d sub zero of x y1 to yk that is uh, linear span of the set of words which uh, either have uh, shorter length or do not have X as a factor in the last multiplication. Uh, if this property holds for all X, Y sub I in A, then we call A a K mixing algebra and uh, a similar concept uh, uh, to the case of mixing algebra uh, of sliding algebras allows us to define sliding algebras. We require either of uh, two properties to hold, either the set of words which have uh, uh, the set of uh, words in X, Y1, YK uh, of length K plus one, which have X as the factor, uh, as the second factor in the last multiplication belongs to 
uh, is included in the linear span of uh, d sub l of all respective uh, variables or the mirrored set of x multiplied by w capital of y1 to yk is included in the linear span of dr of, of x y1 to yk. Uh, if at least one of these property holds, we, def we say that A is a k slide in algebra. Uh, these two notions, as I have already somewhat mentioned, are connected to those of mixing and sliding algebras. A finite dimensional F algebra is mixing if and only if it is two mixing, and it is sliding if and only if it is two sliding. And they're also connected to steadily growing length. Uh, for a k mixing or k sliding algebra uh, with uh, k greater than two and dimension of at least two, uh, a following property can be demonstrated for its generation for a generation set S of A and M a characteristic sequence of S. Uh, we have uh, that uh, two neighboring elements of the sequence and M cannot cannot differ by more than k minus one for all possible indices. Uh, from this, uh, quite similarly to the previous proofs, follows that the length of A is bounded by uh, value by one plus k minus one multiplied by d minus one. Uh, or if we slightly expand uh, this expression, k minus one multiplied by d minus k plus two. Uh, in particular, this allows us to see that the classes of k mixing and k sliding algebras are uh, do have slowly growing length and k minus one is u velocity for both of those classes. Uh, it can be demonstrated that uh, these uh, classes are different from slowly growing algebras and even more, it is possible to obtain a class of algebras uh, with arbitrarily high uh, u velocity using the using k round and k based algebras, which are two specific uh, classes of algebras introduced exactly for this purpose. We say that an algebra A is k round if for all x y1 to yk in A, and for any products uh, V of uh, variables y1 to yk with any given placements of parentheses, it holds that x multiplied by V is zero. And uh, we say that an algebra A is k-based if for all x y1 to yk in A and any fixed placement of parentheses in the word uh, uv equal to y1 to yk, it holds that uh, x multiplied by uv is equal to u multiplied by xv, and uv multiplied by x is equal to ux multiplied by v. It can be seen that any k round algebra is k sliding, and any k based algebra is k mixing. And uh, even more, uh, uh, we can construct uh, examples which demonstrate that uh, k minus one uh, is the lowest possible u velocity for k rounds and k based algebras. Uh, I will go over the first one of them. Consider an algebra AD with the basis x1 to xd, uh, d greater than 
greater than or equal to k greater than or equal to 2. And the following multiplication law, xj multiplied by x1 is xj plus 1 for j from 1 to k minus 2. And x, x, xi multiplied by xk minus 1 is equal to x i plus 1 for i from k minus 1 to d minus 1 with other products being 0. We have length of algebra e sub d to be greater than or equal to length of its generator set x1, uh, which is equal to uh, k minus 1 multiplied by d minus k minus 2 multiplied by k minus 1, as we have uh, x1 to be an irreducible word of length 1 in this set, x2 to be irreducible word of length 2, and so on, all the way to uh, the word uh, x k min minus 1, which would have length uh, k minus 1. And then we would uh, proceed with multiplications of x k minus 1 and other words. Uh, each time increasing the value of length by k minus 1 with the final element xd uh, having length uh, as on the frame in front of you. k minus 1 multiplied by d minus k minus 2 multiplied by k minus 1. It also can be seen that ed is k round. Uh, this uh, lower bound allows us to conclude that uh, k minus 1 is the lowest velocity for the k round algebras. And uh, for example, uh, three round algebras are not, uh, do not have slowly growing length, but they have steadily growing length with uh, u velocity equal to. 3 minus 1 equal to 2. Uh, finally, I would like to mention two other important classes of algebras, that is Malsev and Jordan algebras. We call A a Malsev algebra if for all x, y, z, and A, it holds that x, y equals to minus y, x, or anti-commutative property. And uh, uh, the second property, xy multiplied by xz equals to xy multiplied by z multiplied by x uh, plus so forth. You can see the equation on your screens. And A is called Jordan algebra if for all xy in A it holds that xy equals to yx and uh, xx multiplied by yx equals to x multiplied by x multiplied by yx. It can be demonstrated that uh, Malsev and Jordan algebras are both three mixing. Uh, however, uh, unlike uh, th uh, three based and uh, three round algebras, uh, the class of Malsev algebras over a field of characteristic greater than two and the class of Jordan algebras over a field of characteristic greater than three both have slowly growing length. Uh, while the exact proof is uh, beyond the scope of uh, this talk and is quite involved, uh, I would still like to mention uh, the main idea of it. Uh, as with the general algebras, uh, in study of their lengths, one can move from all the words in the generating set to only irreducible word, to only irreducible words. Uh, here we can uh, tighten the scope even further and go from all irreducible words to only irreducible words, which, which uh, uh, can be, which are products of, sequential products uh, of words of length two or less. 
uh, that is in each of their sub multiplications, at least one factor has length two or less. Using these uh, words, uh, it can be demonstrated that uh, even if we have a bigger gap in the characteristic sequence, that is uh, for three mixing algebras, we can have uh, two neighboring elements to be uh, to differ by zero, one, or two from the general property. Uh, if we have uh, this gap to be equal to two and not one or zero, uh, this uh, slightly bigger hole would still be covered by the fact that uh, if m sub j plus one minus m sub j is two, then m sub j minus one is required to be equal to m sub j, th thus uh, covering this uh, difference uh, in values. Uh, I would like to thank you for your kind attention, and I would be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, are there any any questions or comments? I have one question. First of all, thank you for your lecture. Okay, maybe somebody in the chat or or in the room okay uh, if not let's thank again dimitri 